Okay, welcome back YouTube, uh, welcome back to part 2 of the uh, Brunswick uh, Army Overview and in this second part we will be covering the uh, last half of the division and that will be the three battalions of light infantry and their commander uh, so that's the uh, line infantry brigade uh, the two uh, squadrons of cavalry, the Uhlans and the Hussars and then finally, uh, the two uh, ver uh, horse and foot artillery and uh, a quick overview of the uh, commanding officers. So I already have the uh, brigade commander of the line infantry up on the table there. And we'll uh, move in on him. So this guy is a Perry's um, mounted colonel figure uh, from the mounted colonel pack. And this guy, like I said, is the, the uh, brigade commander for the Line Infantry Brigade, and he is uh, a Lieutenant Colonel von Speck. So let's give you a quick look at this guy now. Again, you may, you've obviously uh, probably seen the individual video on this guy. Um, this is the first time I tried uh, water effects without the water effects, but I actually did go back uh, and put some proper water effect in there so it actually looks a little bit fuller than it did uh, originally um, makes it look a little bit better uh, but yeah really do like uh, the way this guy turned out um, and a uh, good figure uh, really nice and of course uh, the chestnut horse so that is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Von Specht uh, Brigade Commander of the Line Infantry so let's put him there. So next up we'll be starting on the rest of the uh, Line Infantry Brigade, or Battalions. And let's just move the camera down a little bit. And first up we will have the first line. Uh, these were actually my very first unit I did. And it's... Uh, I haven't really looked at them properly uh, since because um, I've mentioned in a few comments that I actually had them uh, all up on uh, the shelf um, above my eye line, so I couldn't really properly see them. Um, I could see that they were there, but I couldn't actually see them properly. So I haven't. This is the first time I've actually, apart from uh, laying them out on the table, had a proper look at them. Uh, since I originally did them. Now these chaps are uh, Perry's, all Perry's. I think there's one front rank uh, here uh, because of the uh, command packs having two drummers. Um, now obviously line infantry don't have the bugler but they do have uh, the flag bearers. So uh, we'll start off with, uh, now this was the first time I actually uh, decided to put um, a uh, made up sergeant in um, basically uh, like I say if, if you watch the last part of my last video um, where I went over the differences between uh, a Brunswick sergeant and a normal trooper uh, this is kind of like what I do for my pseudonym sergeants uh, it's basically just a normal trooper and I've just basically painted on the blue and white uh, belt that they would normally have um, now I think on a couple of sergeants in my later uh, versions. I did actually try and make their pouches out of plastic putty um, but obviously this was my very first go so uh, it hadn't occurred to me at that point and obviously they haven't got a swagger stick but at the same time uh, he's got sergeant stripes on his arm and uh, he looks a little bit beefier than the rest which is why I thought he'd make a good sergeant because uh, everyone else's recruits and um, conscripts and uh, they're probably uh, not quite as well fed uh, and certainly not as experienced as the NCO. So there's a uh, quick look at an NCO stand. Uh, then we'll have a quick look at the uh, one of the rear ranks. Now like I said uh, most of these guys are parries so of course you can tell that these guys are parries because they all kind of have the same sort of position uh, to, a, to a degree. Now obviously within the six that you get in a pack they are different to a degree uh, but they're all more or less in the same marching position. Uh, they just have various different heads and various different uh, angles of head. Uh, so that's what, and of course, uh, the first line has the red uh, colours, 
stripes and uh, pauldrons. So finally, uh, a quick look at the flags. Uh, GMB. Now, um, similar to the British uh, style of flags, um, we have this flag here. Now, I've forgotten the names of them. Um, one is basically the Duke's flag, uh, which is this one here, which has the uh, the cordage on it. And if you remember back, um, the Perry's commands, line infantry commands, came with this crown on the top of their um, standards, of which I carved off and put on top of a uh, a GMB British uh, top, flag topper, uh, cutting off the spear end and putting on the crown. And for the regimental flag, uh, I have uh, basically just the normal uh, spearhead of the uh, the uh, brass pike. Uh, however, uh, like I said uh, again, some, some similar videos. It's it's not too far off what the uh, if it was just a little bit broader. It, would, it wouldn't be too far off of what the actual um, Fanion head would be uh, for the second flag. So, of course, these guys are all Perry's command. Uh, but, uh, again, uh, you know, I think they look pretty damn cool for my very first unit. Um, and uh, beautiful flags. So that is the first line infantry. I'm going to just move those chaps out of the way. managed to stab myself on one of my Ulan spears and I've drawn blood but luckily it's not a gasher so I'm sure I'll survive okay let's go for the second next now you can tell that these chaps are front rank because uh, they're actually a lot heavier uh, than Perry's So here we go. These are the uh, second uh, Brunswick Line Infantry Battalion, and like I said, these guys are, I believe, they're all again all but the drummer um, front rank. And uh, let's give you the blurb. So these guys are commanded by a Major von Stormback. And let's show you a normal stand of troopers. So here we go. So of course this, I think this was the second unit I did. Um, and the first unit of uh, front rank uh, that I've got in for the Brunswicks. Um, again, beautiful figures. Um, but they had gone up in price at this point. Um, or, or Actually, thinking about it, I think they, I got these just before they went up in price. Uh, so these guys were... 40 ish pounds, I think, possibly 42, and now they've gone up to like 46, something like that. Um, so, there you can see these guys have green, green facings, green stripes, and uh, the NCO stand. You can see the this is a uh, obviously a front rank sergeant figure, so he's got the swagger stick. the uh, correct saber and the uh, little cartridge case and of course the sergeant stripes and of course he's joined by three normal uh, front rank troopers and then of course finally the command section again so here's a quick look at the Duke's flag again uh, this uh, particular little crown I, I actually uh, made myself uh, out of a, uh, a normal sort of spear point. I think I used the normal uh, GMB spear point, flattened it out using some needle nose pliers, cut it to shape, and then used plastic putty to, to make the two extensions to make it into a crown. I mean, it's not 100% perfect, but I think it looks pretty damn, pretty damn good. Um, and of course, uh, the normal spear point for the uh, unit flag. And again, uh, beautiful looking flags. Uh, and again, GMB. So, 
Yeah, you can't go wrong. And a uh, pretty standard looking uh, front rank command squad th there. Okay, that is the uh, second line. So, oh, and of course, uh, these guys again have got a, a Perry's drummer. I'll just give you a quick look at him because uh, I always like the Perry's drummers, I think they're great. So, that's uh, the second line. Now, we'll move on to the final uh, line infantry battalion. And these chaps, I believe, are a mixture of front rank and Perry's. Because basically I used up the remainder of my spare front rank guys and just added the Perry's guys uh, Perry's guys to fill in for the guys that I didn't have. So it worked out a pretty cheap unit this. I think I think I only had to get like three boxes uh, three boxes of figures instead of four. <coughs> Okay, so uh, this is the third line infantry battalion, and they are commanded by a Major von Norman. And we'll just give you a random look at a unit of troops. So here we are, these guys have got uh, white facings. You've got a corporal there on that stand. Uh, I think we've got two front rank and two uh, perries on the stand. So there we go. That's a normal troop, of, a normal standard troops. Uh, then we'll go for the sergeant stand. Now this is actually a uh, made-up sergeant again. Uh, so again, we've got the front rank with three perries. Right? Yeah, I think that's the front. I think that's uh, perries. Yeah. You can tell that the perries is just slightly. Slightly smaller, maybe like half a foot. Uh, this guy, of course, being the smallest of the Perrys, I think he's actually even smaller than, than the other two Perrys. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's the NCO stand. And uh, finally, uh, go for the command. So, again... Uh, my Perry's command. These guys are standing, I believe, uh, just to change them out. Really do like these uh, officers, actually. Uh, again, there's the uh, Duke's flag with the crown, and there's the regimental flag uh, with the Fanion point. So there's the command. Still very happy with the decision to use uh, silver rather than than the grey for the uh, officers' uh, facing details. I think it's it's uh, it stands out really well, um, and it really pops on the uh, pops on on, on the chests. Uh, and I went for the standard, the more grey on the actual troopers. Um, although I did actually slightly change my style as I went along. Um, you'll find in my later units that I actually lightened the grey that I used uh, on their uh, the, their tunic details or or, or uh, jacket details, so that it stands out a little bit a little bit better. Um, let's just try and grab an example. So, if I grab my one of my Lieb units here, um, you'll see that the um, although it's toned down by black ink, you can actually tell. Um, Although, strangely enough, it doesn't look as if it is in this camera, but uh, I can assure you in real life, um, this one is actually a lot lighter than this one, even though it seems to do this, this strange mirror reverse thing uh, on, on, the, uh, on the camera, which is very strange. Um, anyway, uh, that was just a little, uh, little uh, change in painting technique. It doesn't really make too much difference. So that is uh, the third uh, line infantry battalion. That's the, the, the end of the infantry. Um, next up, uh, we'll start on the cavalry. So let's just put these guys to the back. So these, I was trying to work out exactly how long these guys took me to do. Um, 
and uh, sort of working on the basis of uh, each battalion uh, taking me um, a week um, as in sort of seven days ish uh, I mean sometimes I finished a little bit earlier than that but that's just kind of a good average that's, that's basically more or less what I did um, and there's eight battalions of infantry two battalions of cavalry so that's uh, ten weeks uh, I did both the cannon batteries in a week so that's uh, eleven weeks and uh, twelve, thirteen 14 weeks in total, I think, um, not including the week that I did my uh, French battalion. So it's taken a fair old while to collect these boys up. Um, and I've got to say that I am uh, very, happy, very, very happy with them. So let's uh, get going with the cavalry. So uh, let's bring them on. So first up, we will have the... Uh, second Hussars. Now, uh, there is a little bit of uh, controversy over this name of the Second Hussars. Um, they're, they're actually marked down on my uh, order of battle uh, that I got the uh, Brunswick Division from as the Second Hussars. Uh, but actually, by this point, um, the uh, Brunswickers actually only had one squadron of, uh, or one regiment of uh, cavalry. Oh, it's particularly hussars. Um, so I remember somebody saying, um, "Why, you know, why are you calling them the second hussars when there's um, only one uh, one regiment of them?" Um, and uh, after a bit of to and throw with this chap, uh, it was uh, it was decided upon the fact that um, you can actually call them either just the Brunswick hussars or uh, the second hussars because it was actually the second hussars. Uh, which was the surviving unit, so as a you know, so it could go either way. You could basically say either just Brunswick Hussars, or you could say Brunswick Second Hussars, and that kind of put a stop to that. So let's have a look. So these guys are commanded by a Major von Kram, and these are Perrys, and of course they're metals. And we shall start with uh, again. I'll just do a, a, a again of design that so they could be split into two. So we have uh, the, the NCO here, uh, and obviously the officer in the front rank. And you could basically use them as two separate smaller units, uh, or uh, join them together as one large or one medium, rather or normal size. And I'll just give you a sort of basic look at the, the different positions. So uh, here's one of the front rank uh, uh, enlisted guys. Uh, really nice uh, models these. I certainly can't complain about anything with them really, apart from the fact perhaps that the horses did have a lot of flash on. Um, they were, I mean, they were, I wouldn't say they're the worst horses I've ever seen, but um, they were getting on getting on for them. Um, they had a lot of flash between the back legs, they had uh, nubs all over them, uh, they had a lot of flash uh, underneath the chins, and they had a lot of flash between the front legs too. Um, and they all had to be carved away uh, and snipped off. And of course, the, the, these are absolute classics for uh, not spotting uh, nubs and um, not finding them until you, you're painting, uh, which is really annoying. Um, so here, like I say, is the standard uh, front row of troops. These are the charge, the ones that are leading the charge. Uh, and of course, the ones at the back, I, I've tried to use more neutral positions because they wouldn't be uh, riding with their swords up uh, as much as the ones that are charging at the front um, and of course these horses have this skull and crossbones on the side and enlisted men uh, and NCOs have a white skull and crossbones and officers have silver and also I think the, the buglers do too so I think these guys are, I think I put all these guys on chestnut horses and this is, even though I did actually have orange brown when I did these guys, I didn't. It didn't occur to me to use it in my chestnut horses, which is a little bit of a shame because it gives you a nice, uh, um, a nice tone, uh, an alternate tone uh, for a chestnut horse. It gives you a slightly uh, lighter orange tone. So here we have a, a a unit of normal hussars from from the rear rank, and you can see that these guys are. Uh, somewhat uh, sort of sabers down in comparison to the ones that are actually charging. Um, 
I thought it looks better. Um, so yeah, that's the normal stand of troopers from the rear. And now finally, uh, we'll go with the command. So here we go. Uh, I tend to go for um, the sort of white grey horses uh, more than, than pure grey. I mean, I have done some grey horses uh, in some of my cavalry units. Um, but a lot of the time uh, it just seems to be like clockwork in me that I just tend to go for this style even though because I mean they start off pretty similar um, the same uh, same uh, primer same um, first color um, and it's only really after that that you kind of uh, you either build up gray or you build up uh, gray gray white so this is the bugler and he's more or less the same as a normal trooper apart from the fact that he has a silver skull and crossbones and of course he has his bugle and for the officers a beautiful officer figure this by the way uh, again so the officer has the silver skull and crossbones he's got the uh, saber tash uh, again with the skull and crossbones uh, and they have the uh, gold and crimson uh, belt where the normal troopers have a, um, it's uh, red and blue, or crimson and blue, as you can see on the uh, the bugler there. And of course, light blue for their facings. And of course, uh, the split black line for the officers there. So that is the Brunswick Second Hussars. Next up we will move on to the Ulans. Now the Ulans uh, at the Battle of Waterloo uh, were uh, just a single squadron. Uh, however there's no real point to doing a single squadron uh, when you, can, you might as well just do a, uh, a full squadron of them. Uh, so that's what I obviously decided I'd, that I'd go for. Because I'm not really uh, building these guys up to fight the Battle of Waterloo. Um, they're just based on the Battle of Waterloo uh, order of battle. And it does actually give you the rules uh, to uh, mount them as a full uh, squadron in uh, Albion Triumphant. I'll just quickly look that up now. Uh, I, think they, I think they call it a squadron, don't they? Let's double check. So... Brunswick, uh, that's a Dutch, there we go, Brunswick, Brunswick Uhlans, yeah you can have a full, no a squadron is the smaller unit, um, the normal Brunswick Uhlans are a regular sized cavalry unit, um, and of course uh, it's just basically a small, a very small compared to a a regular sized unit is the only uh, difference in orders uh, and of course the Ulans and the Hussars both have Marauder so they don't have they don't need the uh, the commander to to uh, go off on their own and we'll go on to these guys now so here we go the Ulans so again these guys are Perrys um, I kind of had it in my mind that uh, for cavalry, I was going to go Perry's all the way. Um, obviously, uh, I could have went for. Um, I think I think elite and front rank both do uh, cavalry um, for the Brun for the Brunswickers. But my I guess my main decision was uh, budget. Um, it works out a lot cheaper uh, getting a, a Perry's cavalry unit um, compared to. Uh, probably over forty pounds for the front rank, and um, probably uh, a similar sort of price, uh, maybe a few pound, one or two pounds cheaper for elite. Uh, and I think these guys were around about thirty six, so uh, still very expensive. Uh, but again, uh, when it comes to uh, Brunswickers, you kind of have no choice but to get metals. Um, although saying that, I did actually see a picture on um, one of the black the uh, forums 
of some guy who decided to make some Br Brunswickers out of uh, some uh, Vitrix uh, British using French heads. Um, and although uh, they looked uh, okay, um, it's not something that I would have done. Uh, but it's not, uh, just not uh, accurate enough for me. So, uh, up front we have the Ulans ready to go. So let's give you the blurb on these boys. So, these guys are commanded by a Major Pot. And uh, now I believe, um, obviously when you, when you buy these guys, uh, they come with um, soft uh, lances. Soft lead lances that are, that are quite a bit shorter um, than what I ended up using. Let's, I just dropped some on the floor, so let me just grab them. Uh, now I did actually have these painted up, um, so they. So when I show you them in a second, you will actually see that they are painted up. But um, when it came to um, actually uh, putting them into their hands, um, I, I felt that, that a they were here. They are here. So these are the ones that came with the Perrys. Um, they, they kind of remind me a lot of uh, the gripping beast uh, spears that you get in like their saga packs. Uh, made of very soft metal um, and particularly short. Um, I found that they were uh, quite a bit shorter than what I'd imagine a lance would be. Um, so uh, what I ended up doing is I actually had... Uh, a pack of, I think I had a pack of like 18 um, brass uh, pikes um, which I originally had got to use for the standard poles uh, for the line infantry um, but I actually ended up uh, swapping them out um, and trimming uh, because I think they're like um, I think they could be, I can't remember what size they are uh, 100 mil perhaps? Uh, I can't really remember but basically, obviously, I just trim them down, and if I just uh, grab one, put it to the side, and compare it between um, the spear here, you can actually see that um, it's not very much longer, but it's it's probably about like maybe that much longer. Um, and the and the, the reason why I decided to make cut them a little bit longer was because it just looked better. Um, I was I was a little bit worried about the space for the for the, for the fanions, and, and here we have a loose uh, a loose lance in this guy's hand here. Um, that's obviously one of the the major problems with these boys. Um, you literally uh, have to just breathe on them, and their lances become loose. Um, I shall stick that into his hand in, in, a, in a moment. Um, but let's uh, just give you a rough overview. Again, I, decide, I designed them so that they could be uh, split into two. Uh, let's give you a look at the uh, some of the f one of the front rank units. So these chaps, I decided to put all on bay horses. Um, some normal bays, some dark dark bays. Um, and uh, not many of them have markings, so uh, these two are a bit of a rarity, both to have uh, the nose markings there. Um, but uh, yeah, there's the, the, the basic look at them. Um, quite a lot of uh, light blue on them. Uh, the uh, Zapkas, uh, the headwear. Uh, was uh, it's not too, a little bit fiddly to do, especially when you first start. But as soon as you get used to it, uh, it's not too difficult at all. The uh, fanions are um, GMB. And let's just that guy back and go over in the rear again I tried to um, there was basically two positions in, in the pack and I've just loosened that rider too it's all falling apart here it's all falling apart so here we have the NCO's uh, base you can 
can see that they're kind of uh, a little bit more at rest than the ones in the front rank. Um, and uh, I had to draw the little skull and crossbones onto these guys' horses uh, because they didn't come with them. So that is the NCO stand. And finally the officer. So here we go. The beagle on the officer. Again, grey white horse. The officer on a nice just a little bit of nose marking on, on his horse. But again, a similar sort of style, the black twin stripe down the uh, blue lines uh, on both on his uh, pants or his riding breeches and his uh, shabrak and bugler with his uh, bird's nests and of course uh, the gold uh, thing around his uh, the gold strapping the officer and that is the Ulans. So let's move these chaps back. Uh, we're almost we're getting towards the end now. Uh, just the artillery and the uh, the command to go. I think what we'll do for the artillery is we'll bring, try and bring them all on. Now artillery wise, uh, the Brunswickers had uh, one uh, battery of horse artillery and one battery of uh, foot artillery. So. We we'll start off with the foot artillery. Is there? Uh, I think they're first in the order of battle. Let's double check. Yes, they are. Okay, so uh, foot artillery. Um, now, if you go back to my, if you've watched my artillery video, you know uh, that I explained why they have French guns. Um, the uh, crew, the figures, uh, company-wise, are uh, the actual guns are both front rank, and the crews are. Uh, front rank and parries, uh, and there's actually no officer available, um, so I ended up converting one uh, from a, uh, I think it was a, la a light infantry officer, and uh, the only real thing that I converted on him was on this particular figure, was his uh, pom pom on top of his uh, hat, and it looks like the uh, lance has actually now fallen out of the guy's hand. On my new lands there, I'll have to sort it out uh, when I finish the video. So let's just give you a quick look at these. So this is the front rank uh, crew. Um, I don't believe both of them are, are loading. Uh, just in slightly different steps of loading. Um, this is, like I say, is the front rank stand. Um, actually, no, it's not. It's the Perry stand, actually. Uh, because it's got the officer on. There you go. Um, yeah, these are the Perrys. Um, Four-man crew. Uh, there's the guy plugging the hole for them to uh, put the round in. Um, obviously, that plugging the hole is to basically stop uh, oxygen going in. Um, and if the uh, plant, the sponger, has missed any uh, um, um, uh, um, I've forgotten the name. Um, basically, so when it, it obviously sponges it to, to put out any uh, any uh, material that may still be alight, basically. Uh, and when it's reloading, the uh, fuse guy 
uh, we'll put his thumb into the hole uh, where the fuse goes to basically stop uh, if there is any embers, embers is the word I'm looking for, uh, in there that would get um, stirred up by oxygen. Um, they won't relight when the uh, charge is stuffed in uh, because the last thing you want to do is to be uh, ramming home a charge and uh, the embers uh, decide to um, you know uh, power themselves up from a bit of wind from the from the fuse hole and it lights the powder prematurely and uh, you've got an accident waiting to happen there so that's the reason why uh, he plugs his thumb in there uh, just when the guy rams home the uh, charge uh, and of course here's the officer uh, like I say, this particular one, uh, all that I changed on him was his pom-pom. Uh, he had the wrong type. Um, and of course, line artillery uh, are uh, more or less dressed like uh, normal uh, infantry, apart from the fact that they have a, a little grenade on their shakos, uh, and they have the yellow facings. And of course these guys have French guns, um, which they are uh, documented in having used uh, after buying them uh, after the Battle of, I think it's the Battle of Leipzig, um, is when they actually acquired them. Um, which would have actually been, I think I said 1809 in my first video, but I think it's actually 1814 they got them. Um, So that is uh, the uh, foot artillery uh, with the Perry's crew. And we have the uh, second cannon and these guys are the front rank crew uh, in a pretty similar position. Um, apart from the fact there are maybe a few steps back. Uh, this guy hasn't blocked up the hole yet. Um, now if you remember back again I, I, I actually put this guy on the wrong side because uh, I decided to put the French gun crews in their French crew positions rather than uh, the British style. And uh, yeah quite, quite nice figures uh, the, the uh, front rank uh, artillery crew. Um, they are definitely uh, on the chunky side compared to Perry's. Um, obviously, they don't look too bad side by side, by side but I, I wouldn't. It's definitely a, a, I wouldn't have mixed the crews up on these um, because the Perry's guys are uh, particularly uh, on the on the, the thin side, uh, and and these guys. I don't know if these were a really old, um, you know, an older sculpt um, before they, you know, maybe the later Perry's models have got a little bit more bulk on them uh, in comparison. So next up we'll go for the horse artillery. Uh, now these guys, uh, again if you watch my artillery video I'll explain why uh, these guys have got British guns and the fact that it's not really known uh, whether they did actually use British guns. Um, but I was going on the premise that if they were given British guns then it would be the horse artillery that would use them because uh, they're obviously lighter uh, than the French guns or, or uh, the, if uh, the other guns that they would they could possibly have used, which would have been either Austrian or Prussian, um, British guns, uh, same calibre, lot lighter, uh, so perfect for horse artillery. Uh, alas, that's why I used them. Um, now these guns came with the Perry's crews. Uh, obviously, I brought one horse and one uh, foot artillery and, and swapped swapped them round. Uh, these are the um, front rank crew. Um, and these guys again are loading, strangely enough. Um, although I don't really understand why that match guy is kind of getting ready to fire it before they've even put the uh, the charge in. Um, but maybe he's just standing off ready. Um, but I, if he was, uh, if I was commanding that battery, I wouldn't uh, allow him to stand like that. Uh, but there you go, uh, Corporal. There, he's obviously the fuse guy. Um, and the chap with the charge and the guy who's going to be ramming at home. So that is the uh, horse artillery uh, uh, gun one and here's gun two and gun two has got the officer and this guy uh, again is a conversion. Um, he originally was wearing a soft cap 
and came in one of my light command infantry boxes. Um, I snipped uh, that off and um, stuck on a, um, I think it was a drummer's head, uh, a Lieb Battalion drummer's head. Um, or maybe it's just his shaker, I can't remember exactly whether it's a full head swap or just his shaker. Uh, but either way, um, it already had the skull and crossbones on it. Um, and uh, all I had to do was basically just um, stick that on and then I he had a bit of a miscast hand so I used plastic putty to build that back up. Uh, and these guys are actually running the gun forward, uh, these particular Perry's ones. And you can see that the uh, the horse artillery uh, are in slightly different uniforms uh, to the uh, the foot artillery. They have the horse hair on their shako, and they have a different uh, jacket, different design of jacket. And of course, they're all, they've all got cavalry sabers uh, instead of uh, saber bouquets. And this little wall here is actually made out of dust clay. Um, and uh, it's it's pretty pretty poor effort really, but for some reason it did actually turn out not looking too bad in the end. Um, that was actually part of the reason why I decided to get get it in grey was so that uh, I could make stone walls out of it without having to bother painting them. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the uh, the foot artillery battery. So that's all the, the artillery done. Uh, now we'll be going into the final stage. Uh, which is where I'll basically just give you a quick run over the command figures and then I'll just do a quick sort of flyover. Um, we'll actually leave the, the foot artillery there. So again, if, so if we're going backwards through, uh, well even though we've, got, we've come, kind of gone forward through the, the order of battle, if we now go to the command and go backwards, uh, so here we have the second in command, um, Colonel Alferman. Uh, obviously, um, you may have uh, recently watched the video that I did on him, so I won't go into too, too close a detail, but I'll just do kind of a spin around, and I'll just go in close and give you a spin around. Uh, so this chap was the second in command um, when the Duke was around, uh, but the Duke was actually shot uh, at Catrabar a few days before the Battle of Waterloo started, uh, and this chap uh, took command of the division, uh, only to be shot, uh, quite early in the day uh, on the actual uh, battle of Waterloo on the 18th and uh, he unfortunately had to give up his command um, and another colonel took over. So poor old Offerman. Uh, Perry's, uh, Perry's uh, mounted colonels. So if you take uh, this chap Offerman and the two battalion commanders that's basically the uh, Perry's mounted colonel pack. So that is Alferman. And now finally we have the uh, Duke himself uh, on one of these mighty 100mm bases. Again, uh, if you might have recently just watched the video so I'm not going to go too close into detail but this is the Perry's pack. Uh, you get all three figures. The Duke, uh, aide-de-camp and a... Um, well I suppose it's an aide... Uh, an aide and an aide de camp. Um, so this is his uh, aide, and this is a guide bringing orders. And this is a hussar. And this chap is, like I say, he's probably like a captain or something, a uh, sort of staff officer. Uh, and he, uh, the Duke, is basically uh, trotting along, uh, raising the morale of his troops, uh, smoking his pipe. Um, quite calmly uh, as uh, musket fire and, and um, chaos is going on around him and in just literally behind him the chaos ensues as a, a frantic hussar uh, rider rides up with some new orders uh, from Wellington uh, which his aide's going to take and no doubt hassle the uh, Duke with uh, momentarily. So that is the uh, command base, and that is the uh, end of the entire overview of the uh, Brunswick Division. Uh, so this has been a great project. I'll now just take the camera off the 
uh, tripod here and I'll do a sort of a flyby. If you just give me two seconds, I'll just fold the tripod out of the way because it's kind of in the way. It's quite hard to close with one hand, you know. Right, so let's just do a quick flyby. So uh, let's let's start off with. Uh, so here's the command. Here is the uh, light infantry. The avant guard here, then the light infantry. So the light infantry actually covers uh, these two blocks here. Then we have the uh, infantry brigade commander and the three units of line infantry. Then we have the uh, the cavalry, so we have the hussars uh, here, and the lancers at the back. Then we have the uh, the horse artillery there, the foot artillery there, and that marks the end of the video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, like I said, uh, this was a really enjoyable project to do. Um, People that are into plastics may not like may not like it because obviously you kind of got no choice but to do uh, metals, uh, all metals. Uh, and imagine these guys probably weigh uh, quite a ton um, when you put them all together. Um, and uh, yeah, really happy to finish them. And uh, now it'll be on to uh, the next uh, parts of my project, which I'll, I'll probably um, do a little bit more work on my French. Um, I've, I've probably I like to aim. I'll aim to try and complete uh, the first division. Um, uh, I think it's um, is it the first division? The first, yeah, the first division um, of the, uh, the third corps, um, which is two brigades. Um, but of course, it's uh, just adding extra units. So I think uh, there's. Let's think. One, two, three, four, five. I think it's six battalions. Uh, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight battalions. So seven battalions. I've already done one. So I think there's seven battalions to do uh, for those chaps. Uh, and then what I'll probably do is I'll, I'll probably do like a division of those guys. Uh, and then I'll start on one of my um, two cavalry um, divisions that, that I plan to do. So we have the uh, first um, French cavalry division, and we have the uh, Hanoverian cavalry division for uh, the Allies. Now the Hanoverian uh, division is actually going to be is not going to be too much work because it's literally just going to be um, two. Uh, squadrons of cavalry or two regiments of cavalry uh, and a command figure um, where the French one is just a little bit bigger uh, at um, I think that's four units uh, plus artillery uh, plus uh, one two three command figures uh, so the French uh, divisions a little bit bigger but um, it would be a nice little uh, sidetrack um, to sort of run alongside my normal French and another little side project that I may well do is that I actually have a unit of um, front rank British uh, that, I, that I want to do up as the Hampshire Regiment uh, which is like my obviously my home my home regiment um, now these guys were not based uh, in it in uh, Europe or England during the Battle of Waterloo these guys are actually over in India uh, but I thought it would be cool to actually have them uh, to be available to put on the tabletop uh, as a uh, sort of a guest guest unit because um, it's always nice to be able to do your your home county uh, regiment uh, and then like I say unfortunately these chaps uh, missed out on Waterloo and uh, end up ended up being uh, stuck in India so that's the end of this video I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed filming it uh, if you're new to the channel uh, and like the content, uh, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, it's not going to cost you anything. Um, and uh, I tend to put one video up a week. 
um, sometimes there might be two um, it all depends on uh, the content really and uh, yeah uh, thanks again to all my normal subscribers hope you enjoyed the videos and uh, until next time catch you all later bye bye